Hello everybody! In this video, I'm going to go over my experience at the League of Legends Mid-Season Invitational eSports event. This is my very first eSports event and I didn't go in with a lot of expectations because I knew basically we were going to be watching a bunch of guys sitting at the computer and then watching them play on screen. So it didn't really seem like it was going to be like a hyped up sporting event to me, but I was pleasantly surprised by how exciting the event actually was. A lot of people in the crowd would start cheering whenever people made big plays or start cheering on their favorite players like Hooney and Faker. And it was just like you would at a regular sporting event. And I was thinking that there wasn't going to be a lot of action to watch because they're just sitting at the computer. But while you're watching it on screen, there is a lot of action going on because there's a lot of team fights. And these guys are pros, so they're making really awesome plays. When you first get to the event, it was sponsored by Coke, so they were handing out free Coke samples. They had poster boards that had Coke on one side, and on the other side it was blank, so you could use the markers they provided to make signs to hold up to cheer on your favorite players, or just say something goofy. Also, I was looking forward to the merchandise that they had there, because, you know, um, it's a live event. Maybe they would have something special. But it was mostly just the stuff that they had on the online store, and they didn't even have everything that they had online at the actual place. Um, a lot of the figures were not there. I was looking forward to getting Misfortune or Gangplank, but they actually didn't have it at the event. They had um, Leona, Nami, uh, Nautilus, and some other figures. It was nice to be able to see like the physical merchandise that they did have there because you know when it's online you're kind of just looking at a stock photo but when you're there you could actually look at the displays that they had up. I ended up buying a Poro stuffed toy. It was a little bit expensive but that was going to be my official souvenir for the event so it was worth it. It's super cute. Just look how fluffy he is. A lot of people were buying Teemo hats there to wear, and I think they actually sold out by the end of the evening. So when you're looking around at the crowd, you can see a bunch of Teemo hats everywhere. They're all probably out there planting shrooms of doom. Like I said, they didn't have all the merchandise that they have online at the physical event, but what they did was they had a whole ton of kiosks up where you could just order what you wanted from the online store, and because you were at the event, they were going to give you free shipping. Some of the really cool things I saw at the event was where the players are actually sitting. They have big monitors right in front of them that shows the champions as they're picking them. Alright, well that's enough talking. I'm just going to let you experience a little bit of video clips that I took. Most of these clips are actually from the SKT and Fnatic match, which went on to the full five rounds. And it was very, very intense. I mean, they were going back and forth at it. And the crowd was super into it. Standing up, waving signs. Oh. Going to game five. Also, whenever something big happens, like an ace or a penta kill or a quadra kill, the lights will start flashing and people will start cheering. Look, look at the stands here. It is full. I think the tickets were probably sold out. Overall, the event was a lot of fun. There was a lot of free swag to go around. They were giving out the uh, Thunderclapper plastic thingies that had League of Legends on it, so that made kind of a nice uh, souvenir. You know, the ones that clap really loud and they light up. They were also giving out a lot of free rubber wristbands that said Worth, Wards Save Lives, and 
a double-sided, I love Teemo and I hate Teemo. I was really sad I missed out on the lanyards because they were giving out lanyards with lots of different designs on it at the very beginning. And they were doing it outside somewhere when the doors open and I guess I was distracted by the merchandise, I didn't see them. So I wasn't able to get one of those. Some people had like 20 around their neck, so I don't know, maybe they just had it in a box outside and they were just all grabbing them. Because that's how the wristbands were, they were kind of just sitting by the door and you can just pick up as many as you want. Speaking of the wristbands, I did pick up some extra for you guys, so if you go and click on the link to my Facebook page and like the post about this event, at the end of the week, I will randomly pick a few people and mail them some free wristbands. Share the love and swag. So in between the events, the swag guy would come out and he would throw out these um, stress ball squishy things. And there were a lot of different ones. There were Teemo themed ones. There was Zig's little bomb ball. Uh, there was a Poro. I think there was also a Gragas barrel. I'm not sure what the others were. Those were the only ones I could see that were getting thrown. I'm actually really short, so I wasn't able to catch any of them, but luckily one of my friends was really tall, and he was able to catch several of them and hand them out to the rest of us girls that were there. So that was really nice of him. Another nice little souvenir is the Heimer Cup. You were able to get it with your purchase of two Coke drinks at the concession stand. So if you couldn't afford any of the other really expensive souvenirs, this is a pretty nice one. You can always drink out of it every time you're playing a game of League of Legends. League of Legends really set up this esports event to be like a real sporting event. I think one of the really awesome things that they had was the live sports casting and they were really good. I mean I felt like I was watching like a football match or something. It was awesome. Their commentary was really funny too. They had a lot of puns and things like that. And it really helped get the crowd going I think. It was, it was neat because when they switched out the three announcers, you could actually go out and meet them in the lobby and take pictures with them. The line to meet and greet and take pictures wrapped around half the side of the building, so I didn't get a chance to take a picture with them. But I did walk by to get a quick look at them, and they are really cute and charming and very friendly in person. Overall, I think the event was worth it. I had a lot of fun. The only complaints I had about it was that there was no re-entry, so... At a regular sporting event, I could understand that, you know, there's no re-entry because they want you to buy the food there. But you gotta understand, this event opened doors at 3 o'clock and it didn't end until about midnight. So that is a long time to be trapped in that building. No matter how big it is and you walk around in circles, it's a long time to be stuck in the building. Also, they did start the event a little bit later in the afternoon, around 4 o'clock. So I, I'm pretty sure they are probably trying to accommodate like West Coast time where the sportscasters were. But I wish they'd started the event a couple of hours earlier just because just because SKT and Fnatic ended up going through all five of their matches and they weren't really that quick. So we were watching their best of five until I think about like 930 and the event could have easily gone until 2 a.m if Edward Gaming didn't completely shut out the AHQ team. It was a little sad toward the end because by the time Edward Gaming and AHQ came out for their match, it was probably about like 10.30 and a lot of people had decided to leave because they'd been in there for so long watching the other best of five match. The crowd was significantly smaller by the time they were playing. That doesn't mean that the people out there weren't still cheering, it's just that it was just like a smaller effect. And it was kind of sad because it felt like, you know, there was a lot less support because a lot of people had left. But I also can't blame the people for leaving because we'd been there a really long time. And for people who came from out of town like me and had to go back that same night because it's Mother's Day the next day and we had to spend it with our family, it was really late. We didn't get back to Jacksonville until like 3.30 in the morning and then I ended up having work at 9 a.m. So I basically powered through that and passed out. I'm, I think a lot of people were really glad Edward Gaming finished all their matches really quickly so we could go home. I mean, by the time we were leaving, everything was already cleaned up outside because I feel like even those people wanted to leave already. 
Also, by the time Edward Gaming came out, I couldn't hold out any longer from buying food because I was starving. The last time we'd eaten was like 2 o'clock. And a lot of the food was already sold out because everyone had been trapped in the building for so long. There were several people who dressed up in full costume as some of the champions. There was a really good Lulu costume, and an Ari, and there was a Lee Sin, and also right next to us in our row was an entire pool party skins of Leona and Lee Sin, and pretty much the whole gang. So that was really cool, they came in a group costume. I hope you get the chance to see a League of Legends live esports event sometime in the future because I had loads of fun. It was definitely worth it. Okay guys, thanks for watching.